There has to be leadership within the team. Coaches can only coach so much. Certain guys on the team have to lead and push guys and challenge guys. It's not personal. That's their job as leaders. Jimbo Fisher is in his third season as head coach at Florida State University. He is starting to build his own legacy after succeeding the legendary Bobby Bowden, college football's all-time winningest coach. Come on now, walk through. The program had had tremendous success in the 1990s, obviously, an NCAA dynasty football team. And uh, all of a sudden, we needed some more energy. And you can definitely see a culture change in Florida State football. I think Jimbo Fisher was a fresh start. I mean, these players, this program, these fans, everybody was desperate to have a winner again. Jimbo came in and kind of gave them that hope and got things going on the right track. All Orange Rogers will be cracked unless otherwise notified. I at least knew, I think, where the problems lied and the things we had to fix and then the issues we had to get to. And I think then the, the kids were more familiar with me early. So I think it helped in, in the transition. Jimbo Fisher's style is meticulous. His practices are designed to get the most out of his players through preparation and repetition. He, he's a coach that, that wants to be perfect, and he accepts nothing less. If they make one misstep, one wrong hand placement, Jimbo doesn't wait for his position coach to get on him. He gets on him. Got to go, Trey. Go, Trey. Flex. Trey. Trey, you can't do that, son. Do it again. Coach Fisher definitely brings a competitive edge, like our Tuesday and Wednesday practices, our grind, grind practices, plain and simple. Bang it. Nice ball. Practice is very high tempo, demanding. We're going to go full speed on that grab, because we know when we practice, the better we practice, the better we play. Tank, you ain't even sweating. <laughs> hey, wipe it on, Coach. At the same time, He's also a player's coach. He understands what motivates them, and I think that kind of gives him a different edge. We can relate because he a country boy, I'm a country boy at, at heart. I feel like now that I've been playing with him for four or five years, you know, I truly understand what he's trying to get across to me and as well as my teammates. Florida State's offense is, in a word, explosive. Even after losing star running back Chris Thompson to injury for the second straight year. Their undisputed leader is fifth-year senior quarterback, E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel is the real deal, recruited by Jimbo Fisher, coached by Jimbo Fisher, is playing now as a senior captain of this football team for Jimbo Fisher. I mean, players know players. Players know talent. Players know winners. And when they get in the huddle, with they have to believe in that quarterback. And they fully trust E.J. Manuel. I think we have a beautiful offense. And you know, I think we're very high power. We can put up a lot of numbers, put up a lot of yards. And like I said, I have a lot of great talent around me, so that helps my job, you know, even more so. Manuel has a number of weapons at his disposal, all with big play potential. Our senior leader, Rodney Smith, does a great job, not just when the ball's in his hands, but does a good job blocking downfield. He's a big, appealing guy, so obviously, you know, he kind of puts fear in DBs and things like that, and he's definitely somebody I want to feed. Rashad Green came in, he led Florida State in receiving as a freshman, and not just receiving yards, but receptions, touchdowns, really kind of became the go-to guy. Extremely fast, uh, I would like to call him a home run hitter type receiver. Although Jimbo Fisher is known as an offensive-minded coach, the Seminole defense has been one of the best in the nation. What's unique about Florida State's defense is they can get pressure with the front four. They don't have to blitz. I believe that's the one constant which you have to have. And uh, we've you know, established great defensive linemen. I think that's where it starts. You have to control the lines of scrimmage. They've got defensive tackles who can get the push up the middle. And then they've got these really quick and athletic defensive ends like Warner and Caradine who can collapse the pocket. And that changes how other teams have to call a game. If Bjorn was uh, from Germany, 
but he's one of our truly great players here and one of the great guys and, and, and unbelievably instinctual. I mean, just gets it. I mean, he was born to play. Uh, I just love playing defensive end. It's just an awesome position. Um, when you have these big boys in front of you and so much fun to like, just say, okay, I'm, I'm a stronger man than you. I'm, go I'm gonna push you around, you know? Anthony McLeod is a, just that prototypical defensive tackle that blows up plays in the middle, but he can occupy two blockers. He's 300 plus pounds, very strong. He's country strong. Marcus Joyner, you know, I, I love that guy. Joyner is 100% all day, every day. He hits incredibly hard for his size. He brings so much punch. Would practice 10 hours a day if you wanted him to. Does not matter, loves to play, loves to compete. It was a really good practice. I liked our practice, except on offense, what I didn't like, we had a tremendous first half of practice. Then all of a sudden, we had those three, four, five, it was, and it was not the same guy one time. Let me ask something. What I tell about the two E's? Effort's great, but execution has to go with it. Is that right? It's gotta be two E's, effort and execution. It cannot be execution without effort and effort without execution. They both go hand in hand. Okay? You got to have them both. Get prepared for the week. Move on. We got to have a great week this week. Okay, guys? Come into our house. Play them back in our house. Be fun. Come on. Take a knee. Hey, guys. Welcome to Florida State University in sunny Tallahassee. This building is the Westcott building. You'll see this on postcards and you know other memorabilia. And uh, this house is the, the head honcho, President Barron. So uh, you know while we're going by, you might want to be quiet because I don't want to disturb him. As y'all can tell, it's 70 degrees out. I'm not freezing like a bunch of people up north. I was expecting kind of a uh, palm trees, you know, right next to the beach. I didn't know what to expect but I fell in love with these live oaks with you know, Spanish moss in them. I think it just adds a nice aesthetic to the whole university and uh, it just makes it a nice place to be. Good to go. This is Landis Green. This is where everybody kind of hangs out when they want to throw a frisbee around or throw a football and uh, maybe sunbathe a little bit. That's our dance school. It's a very well-respected dance school. Had to do a, a ballroom dancing thing in there one time. I don't want to talk about it. Was the most talented, but that's all right. That's all I got. When Hopkins isn't hanging out on campus, you'll find him on the practice field perfecting his golden kick. He is on the cusp of breaking not only Florida State football's all-time scoring record, but the ACC's as well. A lot of people can kick that don't even play football, but they can't do it consistently um, very well. And so um, just being able to do repeated motion every time is, is difficult. I got the opportunity to start very young as a true freshman. So coming in and, and showing that I could contribute to, to wins, I think helped me a lot in uh, my relationships with, with my teammates. There's the faithful snapper, Dax Dellenbach. And then to lighten the mood, Philip Dumar. Each kick has a life of its own and that you have to be in the moment and that the kick I just missed or made um, has no bearing or effect on the kick I'm about to kick. Sometimes you can hear it on the ball whether you hit it good or if you didn't. Being in the conversation with, with some of the guys that are leading scorers at Florida State and the ACC is, is a blessing, it's, it's an honor. Being mentioned in the same sentence just because the talent we've had, the football history that we have at the university is obviously great.
Tallahassee is a, is a great community. It's very friendly, very uh, outgoing, a typical uh, southern community. And uh, it's just big enough, but not, not too big, but not too small. Church is huge in the community, uh, which is always very important for us, uh, you know, for our kids. And, uh, you know, it, it's just an overall great community. Very friendly, very nice people. All right, I'll see you over there. I love you. We're going over here to the Hotel Duval on the eighth floor. They, they, they host my radio show uh, every Wednesday night. Hello and good evening and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Call-In Show. And it, it's a great atmosphere, food and fun, and, and people come and ask questions, they call in, and uh, it's a great environment. Bill is in Tampa. Bill, you're our next caller. Go ahead, you're on the air. Uh, good evening, uh, Coach and Gene. Hey, Bill. Uh, good luck uh, Saturday. Touchdown, Florida State! <laughs> we should have had a few more, huh, Mike? Yeah. It'd been better. <laughs> yeah. They truly love football. It's about as intense and important to the folks here is anything there is. Just curious if we have a general rule of thumb that we try to follow in terms of running, uh, rotating our running backs. Uh, yes, there, there, you, we usually do have a rotation. The Chris got so hot so early. The priority that's put on it, uh, the importance of it, and but you know, people look at it, well, why is sports? It brings everybody together. It's a unifying thing that brings everyone together for common purpose. You want to be somewhere where you have a chance to be good. You don't want to be somewhere else, and, that, and the pressure is all part of it that goes with it. What is the reasonable expectation for execution, and what are the guys uptight, too uptight to make the next thing happen? That's a great question, it really is. We don't have tons of plays. You'll run anywhere from four to eight running plays in a game. You may have a variation of them. Very rewarding when you win. They're very tough when you lose, and I think our whole world not just in, in college coaching is like that, but it's the passion. It's the thing that makes them special. It's a great tradition here. It's a great history, and hopefully we're gradually building that right back into where we want to go, and hopefully it'll come very quickly. The Jimbo Fisher Colin Show, live from the Hotel Duval, continues after these messages. As game day approaches, the focus on this week's opponent intensifies. They're going to make you be consistent. You understand what I'm saying? In the run game, in the pass game, they're not, they're not going to give you. And, and all of a sudden, they're going to jump in and, and, and you know, bring some fire to you. What do you think? Yeah, that's, that's good. Some more, more Bobcat coaches, straight Bobcat. Yeah, straight Bobcat. And the thing they do a good job of, that corner's not really worried about the post. So he'll give a little bit, then he'll see something, and then Come down. he kind of baits you right. and then reacts back in that, in that hole off of that. Do not be afraid to just check it down, have patience in what you're doing. EJ is, is tremendous. Checks probably 70, 80% of the things we do at the line in the run and the pass. Our protections has done a great job of that. Uh, again, an eraser can makes up for a lot of mistakes because of his athleticism. If guys break down, he can scramble, make plays, runs with the ball, does a great job. You can't say enough good things about him. I like Hank and dip out of the eye. You know what I'm saying? You hold, you hit that seven step and it's cloudy, hit the what? Flare. You hit that flare. If you hit that flare, we're gonna be in business. Baltimore <laughs> Roger alert. Let's just go back to three ten. No, three Roger mm -hmm. Rose. I bet they didn't like to flip. All right, let's put that put that Clemson game on a little bit. Let me see what you're talking about right there. And I want to see that uh, near close three Louis F. During our film sessions, I mean, uh, you know, it's a lot of back-to-back, -back, you know, uh, conversation. Now let me ask you something. If you had Vermont Roger on right here, mm -hmm. would you be fair? Yes. Yes. All right. How about Tokyo Bob over here? Yes, you would. You yeah. got tight end. Yeah, you guys gonna Coach motion, be a full man side, mm -hmm. bang bang, and, and this guy here is reachable. He's not over the center. You know, Coach Fisher will point something out, or I may point something out as well, and we'll discuss it. You know, I, and I think that's where I, I think I matured a lot. Uh, you know, I'm able to speak football with him. But they were able to make it sound like five times. And be able to have that same terminology, same football language. That helped me out a lot as a quarterback. Right here, watch what's going to happen. He's always going to collision and get this flat. I, I, I think we're better off get inside him, take that guy, and then now you may get it, but you may just get your flat all day. I mean, nobody, I mean, nobody anywhere is making, take them short yardage and all the green formations. You know what I'm saying? Any questions? You with me? 
Great job, EJ. Out of way to play, EJ. After breaking down film, coach and quarterback hit the practice field to put the game plan into action. Boston, Louie, Bob check. I don't think anything will take you out there. It should be good. All right, EJ, the only thing you're worried about there is three techniques. Four-man side, Lonnie's got. If it ain't there, you can run it out of there. Right flex, right flex. Crab Roger Bob check. I want, uh, I'm sorry, I want flash Z. Flash Z. We break it down in all the different situations and scenarios and personnels and how we want to attack the team, and then we bring it back together in the end to be able to understand how we're going to play the game and the things we're going to do. Good. I liked it. I liked it. All right, you got cover two, EJ. All right, come out checking it, you know what I mean? That's the way to get your focus back. I'll flank him. There you go, bang. He outflanks him, make him play. Great ball. Bobby Bowden Field at Doak Campbell Stadium is the largest in the ACC and makes for one of the more unique college game day experiences in all the country. Tallahassee is special for a Saturday afternoon or Saturday night football game. Great atmosphere, great environment, one that to me it's one of the bucket list things in college football to be able to do. Game day in Tallahassee is a big party. Florida State football fans, it's all about tailgating. Tailgating begins as soon as the parking lots are open. Great tailgating goes on. And then everybody gets into the stadium because they want to be there when the team comes out. What I see on TV look nice on the outside, but on the inside, we like we focus, we lock, lock dead. You know, uh, when we have opportunity to play in front of our own crowd, and, you know, our own fans and you know friends and family, we always obviously want to go out there and play well. You have 85,000 people in this stadium. I mean, that's more than many cities. The atmosphere, that that's one thing that I love the most. There is nothing like a whole football game at Doe Campbell Stadium. I will promise you. That. The tradition of printing gates off the floor and running out before the game and throwing the spear in the ground and, and just that whole atmosphere, it creates, you know, puts chill bumps on you and it's one of the great spectacles in college football. Hop, skip of the jump and total leather. DJ Manuel dropping, looking, throws the ball downfield, got a receiver in the area, it's caught, Rashad Green to the 45 40, near side by 30, Rashad Green to the 25, it's not Kenny Shaw, to a five, touchdown Kenny Shaw, Kenny Shaw on Green, touchdown FSU on third down and seven, 78 yard touchdown pass, touchdown passes, point after touchdown, Dustin Hopkins, he's five points away, here's the snap and here comes Brett, Manuel steps up in the box, looks to the man, finds a line on the receiver, it's dead at the 30, dead to the 25, Duck to the 20. He's out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Second down goal. Manual play action fit. Full action. Pass to the near side. Caught by Wilder. He dives to the pylon. He has a touchdown for the state. Great effort by James Wilder Jr. to find that pylon and get a touchdown. It's his first career receiving TD. <laughs> the 25, the snap, good protection this time. He'll drop the throw, play action fake, pressure coming, gets the pass away, thrown too tall. Sailed on him. Here's the snap out of the gun, Manuel steps up, fires over the caught, first down, 30 yard line. Now we're ready for the field goal, 51 yard. Field goal attempt, Dustin Hopkins, right toe kicker, wearing a gold shoe. Out of the hole of Chris Rebel. Dax Della back snap a good one. Here's the kick. It's got the leg, got the leg, got the leg. It is good. There is your all-time leading scorer in ACC history. Dustin Hopkins with a 51-yard field goal. 31 to 7. Florida State leads Boston College. Play action, play pass to the 
other side. Caught by 3 2 one. Touchdown, James Wilder Jr. Put on a cape and dove into the end zone like Superman. Got to love that. Point after touchdown, Dustin Hopkins. That's one to remember. He just put on a cape and hurtled his body in from three yards away. He refused to go down. The point after touchdown by Dustin Hopkins is good. It's parents weekend, and you know James Sr. is as proud as he can be. Coach Fisher has the Seminoles on the right path. He has managed a successful transition at Florida State, avoiding the pitfalls that come with new leadership, and has begun building a program to compete for a national title. We've had some very good success and uh, building a lot of foundation for the things we want to do in the future as far as the infrastructure of the program and uh, getting kids all the support they need in so many different areas, laying the foundation for how we want to do things within our program and I think it's really, it's starting to pay off now and hopefully it can, will continue here in the future. Three, one, two, three, yeah!